thank you so much, Dan. It's a real pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Medea and Kathy. You know, we travel around a lot. We speak all over the country, all over the world, and it's not too often that the three of us get to sit down and be in the same car together for an hour where Dan was talking about all the countries we've been deported from. <laughs> so it's, it's really great to be with, uh, with uh, Medea and, and Kathy. You know, they, they come from much different backgrounds than I do. If uh, you think about the, the bio that Dan just read, I mean, I was in the military for 29 years. Uh, I was in the State Department for 16 years. I, was ser I served under eight different presidents. And most of the time, they were out protesting every single one of those presidents. <laughs> yeah. I served in embassies in Nicaragua, Grenada, Somalia, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Sierra Leone, Micronesia. I helped reopen the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan in December of 2001. My last assignment was in Mongolia. And the last four assignments, I was the deputy ambassador or acting ambassador. But it was in March of 2003, as Dan said, 11 years ago, 11 years ago yesterday, on March 19th, that I said I could no longer work for the government, that I, I felt I had to resign because of what was going to be happening, that the Bush administration's decision to invade and occupy an oil-rich Arab Muslim country that had nothing to do with 9-11 and who I think most of us felt, how in the hell could they still have weapons of mass destruction? You know, it had been 10 years since the first Gulf War, and since that time, the United States had had two no-fly zones over the country. We had conducted over 400,000 aircraft sorties, blowing up anything the United States wanted to, blowing up Iraqi military installations, government installations, the United Nations had had weapons inspectors in the place. They couldn't find anything. So what in the world was the Bush administration doing? Well, a lot of people have told me, you know, after I've gotten to know them later, so why did it take you so long to resign from the government? You know, it was the Iraq war I resigned over, but think of all those other things that have been going on that you served in the, you served in the government during all that time. Well, I guess I'm a late learner. That must be it. But it, I'm so glad that 11 years ago that I, I resigned. Because if you think about what's happened in the last 11 years, I mean, how many resignations could you give to your country? How many other things should people be resigning over now? I mean, we have torture. We have Guantanamo still open. We have the issues of inde indefinite detention. We have extraordinary rendition, which is still going on. The United States swiping people out of Libya, swiping people out of other places, kidnapping them. It's still illegal, extraordinary rendition. If you look at, well, let's see, what's the theme of this? Civil rights, civil rights. And I want to compliment you all on this wonderful array mm -hmm. of speakers and issues that you're talking about in International Women's Month. Uh, but if you look at 